Hello and welcome to Tea is Good, Books Are Better, the podcast where we drink tea and talk about books. I'm Raven. Jess. What? <laughs> Did you just say your name? <laughs> and I'm Jess. Oh, I heard. Did you just oh. say your name? I heard Jess. I'm pretty sure I said, and I'm Jess. <laughs> oh, well, maybe it cut out or something, but that was pretty funny. Oh, <laughs> oh man. All I heard was. <laughs> I'm Raven. Jess. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to come up with like stuff to updates. talk about. Yeah. Yeah. My God, I was just like. Just an hour ago, it's like a fuck. What the hell do we talk about? What kind of bullshit stuff can I pull out of my butt? Yeah, what filler can we put in the start of this episode? <laughs> I have a little, little, a little snippet. Oh, Very go for it. Small. Um, yesterday was supposed to be my tattoo appointment. Ah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I just got I got the email that they had closed for the month of May. Right. Yeah. And this was when you were supposed to get the little egyptian kitties right yeah the basts on my hips yeah man that sucks pretty disappointing but you know what can i do in this time of crisis yeah there uh there's more important things i guess than (laughs) getting more ink but it's just (laughs) it's sad tattoo shouldn't be something i should be thinking about and this time, but like, yeah, it was something I was looking forward to. Oh well, I think it's it's okay to be disappointed. We don't have to like what's going on right now. Yeah, we've been I've been getting like urges to go to the mall. Right. <laughs> like, like, like yesterday, I was like really missing. Ah. Uh, yeah. You can still go in. There's just nothing open except like pet <laughs> cetera. Actually, you know what? I was walking oh, what? through. I was walking through the other day because I've, I don't know if I've said on the podcast already, but I'm back at work now. Um, I just realized I'm going to have to bleep out what mall you said. (laughs) What? I'm going to have to bleep out the mall that you said. Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I'm back at, I'm back at work now, just doing a couple days a week. Um, Nothing insane. The store is not open to the public. We're just like shipping out stuff for customers. But anyway, yeah, after my shift, I was walking through the mall just to like get back to my car and noticed pet cetera was open that made sense to me right people need to feed their animals (laughs) the only other store i saw that was open was showcase they also doing online shit no it was actually open to the public (laughs) what yeah showcase is like a shop with just like knickknacks it like sells like those tv yeah stuff. yeah a lot of scene on as seen on tv stuff yeah uh <laughs> i saw <laughs> that they were open i was like huh, huh? <laughs> so <laughs> odd yeah it's not like a law that they have to be closed but it's just mm. like it was so weird out of all the stores yeah. <laughs> to be open i would not have expected showcase <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most useless store. Like what the hell did they? <laughs> it is. Uh, I need to go buy a squishy. <laughs> Thank God showcase is open. <laughs> the squishies are overpriced. Yeah. They sell like little ones for like thirty bucks. It's like ridiculous. Fuck that. I'll go on wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so you've been feeling urges to Yeah. Just go yeah. to the mall. Just be a normal human. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like get out of the house, you know? Yeah. Same, like it's May third now, but last week I looked at the calendar and I like saw that it was the day I was supposed to be getting back from Orlando and it just like <laughs> hit me really hard. I was like, fuck man. Yeah. <sighs> This sucks. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I mean, I think it's okay to complain about it. We're doing our part. So. 
isolating. Stay yeah. at home. Exactly. Other than buying groceries. Exactly. Yeah, so, um, let's see. Mother's Day is oh, f- next week. <laughs> By the time yeah. this episode comes out, it will be in two days. Yeah. So, do you have any, like, do you know what you're gonna do yet, if anything? No, or... I'll probably FaceTime her, but that's, like, all I've thought about. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll buy her something from work. <laughs> Goddamn. It's gonna be a weird Mother's Day. I wonder, like, I can see her wanting to go see you guys. <laughs> Yeah, like maybe like I can drop off something, but like not coming in or staying away. Yeah, she'd be you happy don't have just to, to be see a you. Short visit. Yeah, yeah. Just a drop off, like a little something. Or we could always like go to a park or something and just like sit six feet apart. Maybe. <laughs> just if it's the sunny. Yeah. yeah, if the weather permits. Like. I remember learning from a Bill Nye podcast that UV light kills radiation. Oh, no, kills radiation. <laughs> kills viruses. <laughs> uh, yeah, leaving out your groceries outside for a little bit or whatever, anything you buy will help kill. But, like, whatever. Yeah, I don't know if it's quite, uh, what would you call it, like, intense enough from the sun to kill the virus? Light? The UV light? Yeah. It might be, because it, it can give us cancer. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to act like I know anything. <laughs> but yeah, I have heard the same thing. I watched a podcast with a mm-hmm. epidemiologist who, yeah, suggested UV lights for people who are concerned about their groceries. They can just, like, shine it on it. Um, yeah, I'm buying, like, actual UV lights. Yeah. I, I From what I've heard, though, from some other people is that there isn't really much evidence though that the virus is transmitting through like food or groceries or any of that true i don't i don't really like wipe down (laughs) the packages i buy yeah i don't do that (laughs) i hope that they die i think yeah i think the biggest concern is just other people (laughs) yeah yeah that is that's what i'm concerned about yeah I wonder if there's a podcast that we'll have during this quarantine where we don't talk about the coronavirus. (laughs) That was a very (laughs) delayed reaction. That's an impact there, because I was sipping on Uh, a (laughs) tail. Yeah, it's hard to talk about anything else because there's like nothing going on, at least in my life. Because we're not doing anything other than going to work. And staying home, isolating. Yeah. And keeping ourselves sane by watching Netflix. <laughs> or playing Steam. Or playing what? Playing Steam. On Steam. Uh, yeah. What have you been binging on Netflix lately? I might have asked you this already. Um, well, I in two days I watched all of Midnight Gospel that I told you about I think, right. last week. Yeah. Yeah. You suggested this show to me, but I watched two episodes, and I was like, this is too weird for me. (laughs) It was like, Um, I couldn't concentrate on what was happening when I was trying to listen to them. But when I concentrated on what was happening, I couldn't listen to them. So I was like, this is, I don't, (laughs) just not my thing, I guess. What do you like about it? I like the conversations. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Like, they went really deep on things like drugs, if drugs are bad, or accepting death. Mm. Um, well, those are the two episodes you must have watched if you watched the two first ones. Yeah, I watched the, f- the yeah. first one they were talking about uh, weed, I think. Um, yeah, they were talking about, not just weed, but like, discussing the whole concept of all drugs are bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think in the second one, I was trying to concentrate more on what was happening. And oh, yeah, that's where I, like, didn't really hear what they were saying. Oh, yeah. It was pretty interesting what was going on in that world. <laughs> yeah. What were they talking about in the second one? 
Death? Um, the acceptance of death. Mm. So, like, some of them were talking about religious ideas of heaven or, like, from different religions, how they learned how to accept or going to, like, spiritual paths and, like, becoming one again with the, ga- the galaxy of the galaxy? Solar system? Yeah. Something like that. But, yeah, it, pr- it went pretty deep. I see. All that jazz. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I could listen to that stuff if it was like a podcast, but something yeah. about the combination with what was happening just like I don't know, devalued <laughs> like, like the conversation to me or something. I don't know. It's a pretty like cute cartoon that like shows a lot of things like fighting zombies or um watching like weird hippo dogs get ground up into food and fed <laughs> fed to <the> clowns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was just too weird for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, you finished that in two days, you said? Were they only, like, 20-minute episodes? I think so. They didn't seem very long to me. No, they weren't that long. I think there was, like, only maybe eight episodes altogether. Okay, so you did finish it in two days? Yeah, I finished it in two days. Okay, and what have you been watching since? (laughs) Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Nice. (laughs) Which I heard that you haven't seen. Yeah, I've never seen what? it. What in the ever living? I remember watching with mom and I used to live with her. Really? And then she would be like, I love this show. I used to watch it when you were babies. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. You should watch it. Was it on TV sure. when we were kids? Maybe on cable, but we didn't have cable. Yeah, we we couldn't afford cable. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that would be why. It's just like never mm. watched it. When it was, like, yeah. a big thing. So, I don't know. There were other things that came along, took my attention, and why would I think about it? Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? I, like, my first time watching it, I was in my 20s. Yeah. I'm open to watching it. Oh, man, you should. It's hilarious. Okay, and I'll watch it. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith is fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been watching um, Shameless. Have you ever watched Shameless? that? Shameless? No. I've even heard of it. Oh. Do you know Emmy Rosam? Nope. She played the girl in the Phantom of the Opera. I know you've seen that. I haven't seen that in like 12 years. Well, <laughs> she played that girl. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, this show is basically about like this um, big dysfunctional family with like an alcoholic father and then it's basically just like about their lives <laughs> um but it's really good and the main character is very flawed and i like that and it's just a lot of interesting little tales ooh mom's walked in a few times while i've been watching it and she just like doesn't like it cuz there's lots of swearing and lots of sex and lots of like very inappropriate behavior from the characters so she's just like Gah! every time it's on <laughs> that's why i was shocked that she ended up like in game of thrones yeah i feel like we need to interview her or something about yeah maybe what but she... it'll be like history stuff obsessed oh about. yeah that would be why because <laughs> <laughs> it is like it does have some base in yeah like sure from what i've read george rr R. martin did a lot of research into like mm-hmm. english uh monarchies and that sort of stuff yeah yeah cool that's a pretty decent intro nice job we pulled that out of our butts <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> i'll watch fresh prince at some point <laughs> <laughs> they're only like 20 minute episodes too okay they're fun Nice. You can just do one episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure I'll like it. And you can watch Shameless at some point, too. Probably. <laughs> it's good. You'll like it. All right. Uh, let's get into it, then, I guess. All right. All right. Um, we are doing Chapter 28 of A Clash of Kings, which is Bran. Oh, wait. Yo. We didn't do any... Weapon last time or introduce our teas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Gibbon. <laughs> Sorry. What are we drinking today, Jess? <laughs> I am drinking ginger green tea. Hmm. What are you drinking? 
I'm drinking uh, lavender buttercream rooibos. Oh. Oh, that sounds fancy. Yeah, I think I brought it and we had it together once. Did we? I think so. Um, but yeah, I kind of forgot that this tea is already kind of sweet, so I put in my regular amount of honey, <laughs> and now it's like really sweet. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> and where did we leave off our characters? Okay, sorry for yawning. <laughs> not you it's me <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that thank you <laughs> Tyrion sends sir cleos back to rob with their own terms and gives sir alistair a hundred spades and men for the wall to deal with these so-called not so dead dead men <laughs> Tyrion then not so arrests dead, dead grand... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tyrion then arrests grand maester pycelle and throws him in the dungeon for being a fucking traitor yeah yeah Freaking snitch. <laughs> Snitches get stitches. You said that last time too. No, oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember editing it. <laughs> the mountain takes Arya and friends <laughs> and the rest of the villagers to Heron Hall to serve the Lannisters. Arya is placed in the kitchens, I think. Uh no she's not. She is no placed fact. um but with Wheeze, who is under steward. I believe. Janitorial work? Basically. Clean <laughs> yeah. Everyone in Karth, I believe, is how it's pronounced. Yeah. It's treating Danny like the most special guest, and she is very grateful, despite her warnings, to beware from Quaith, the Shadowbinder, and Ser Jura, who doesn't trust the people of Karth. Danny learns from a ship captain that King Robert is dead. <gasps> Dead as fuck. <laughs> Rip Robert Baratheon. <laughs> so the last time we left off Bran, it was when he was like in Summer's head and was seeing the reeds like approach, right? Yes. Okay. Let's get started on chapter 28, Bran. This chapter begins with Mira trying to capture Summer in a net. Summer leaps at her and she manages to net him but gets knocked over in the process. Turns out Bran, Mira, and Jojen are playing some kind of game that involves trying to snare Summer. So it looks like they made friends after Bran saw them in his dream. They free Summer, and Mira asks if Summer ever gets angry, but Bran says not with him. Mira is worried that he might hurt her, but Bran says he won't because he knows that Bran likes her. So all of the other lords and knights had departed after the harvest feast, uh, but the reeds had stayed to become Bran's constant companions. Jojen is so solemn that old Nan calls him Little Grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> but Mira reminds Bran of Arya. She isn't afraid to get dirty and can run and fight as good as a boy. <laughs> it's hard not to feel something about phrasing like that. Yeah. Even though it but... comes from the perspective of a child <laughs> from the Middle Ages. Like, you'd think I'd be yeah. used to it by now, <laughs> reading it in this book. But every time right. it's like, for Girl. fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> Mira is almost 16, a woman grown. Jojen is also older than Bran, uh, but it doesn't say how old exactly. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. I would assume just like a couple years older. And Bran is now nine years old, so Jojen's maybe like 12? Yeah, 12, 13, around there, I yeah. think. Bran is impressed by how Mira can fight with a net and asks if her master at arms taught her. She says her father did. They have no knights, master at arms, or maester at Greywater. Bran wonders who keeps their ravens, but Mira says ravens can't find Greywater because it moves, which confuses Bran. What do you think this means? I wonder if it's like on a great big raft or something. Oh. Yeah. I think it didn't they at one point describe them as being like cabin like wooden wooden like cabins on stilts, like homes there oh point. did it hmm might have interesting because i was wondering yeah. if it meant that like gray water isn't technically a place it's just like the people who oh. oh that's interesting perspective yeah and maybe they move around through the marshes yeah Ooh. i wonder. wonder if we'll figure this out yeah 
Mira tells Bran he's welcome to visit whenever, and Bran decides to ask Sir Roderick when he returns. Sir Roderick is currently off east, where Roose Bolton's bastard had started trouble by seizing Lady Hornwood, Hornwood and marrying her. <laughs> then, <laughs> I did not realize that he did that. Was that in the show? I don't think so at all. Okay. No. Yeah, so Roose Bolton seized her, married her, basically on the spot. Then Lord Manderley had taken her castle. Isn't it Roose Bolton's bastard who did that? Not Roose Bolton. Not Roose Bolton. Did I say Roose Bolton? Yeah, you did. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, it was his bastard. Roose Bolton's bastard seized Lady Hornwood and married her. And then Lord Manderley had taken her castle. And if I'm remembering correctly, this is uh, that, like, really huge fat guy who came. Yeah, I think so. And was, like, talking to Bran and company about marrying Lady Hornwood. And was, like, very concerned about the Hornwood lands. Apparently, he had taken Lady Hornwood's castle in order to protect the Hornwood holdings from the Boltons. Uh, yeah. But Sir Roderick, I think, is, like, unconvinced because he's super pissed about it. Sounds like he's holding it for himself. It, yeah. <laughs> so that he can marry Lady Hornwood. Yeah, well, we all know that he already, like, was interested in it. Yeah. So. Bran says that Sir Roderick might let him go to Greywater, but Maester Lewin never would. Jojen thinks it would be good for Bran to leave Winterfell sooner rather than later. Mira explains that Jojen has the green sight. He dreams things that haven't happened, which sometimes end up happening. Jojen corrects her, saying there's no sometimes. Does that mean it oh. happens all the time? Damn. Yeah, damn. Jojen says he'll tell Bran what's going to happen if he tells Jojen about his dreams. Bran tries to argue that he doesn't have dreams. Maester Lewin gives him sleeping drops. But Mira and Jojen... Oh, sorry, is that drafts? Sleeping drafts. I think I pronounced that draught. Hang on. Is it pronounced drafts? Let's see. Because I've been, I've been pronouncing it draught in my head. Yeah, I think it's draft. Let's see. Draft. What? Yep. It's draft. What? Ever living fuck? It's like the spelling of colonel. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that shit. Colonel. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Stop it's a... <laughs> spelling things so weird. It's a sleeping draft. But Mira and Jojen don't believe that these sleeping drafts work, since they hear people in the castle talk about it. Bran tries <laughs> to say that the dreams don't mean anything, uh, but Mira says the green dreams are different. Jojen says he dreamed of a winged wolf bound to earth with chains. A crow was trying to peck the chains but couldn't break through. Bran asks if the crow had three eyes and Jojen nods. Jojen says he almost died of grey water fever when he was little and that's when the crow came to him. Bran admits that the crow came to him after he fell from the tower. So it looks like you get the green sight if you're like a child who's very close to death or something. Ooh. Interesting. I haven't thought of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but even before Jojen, like, explained the meaning of this dream, it seems very obvious what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so Jojen says that Bran is the winged wolf, and the crow sent the reeds here to break his chains. Do you think the chains are a metaphor for Bran's useless legs, or just being stuck at Winterfell in general? I wonder if it is possibly his own limitations he's set on himself. Ah. Like, he's talked about it with Meister Lewin and all that stuff, and they all tell him, no, this is all dreams. And so, like, he's convinced himself that it's all dreams, and those are his limitations that the crow is trying to break through, and. Right. Uh, Jojen and Mira are sent to break. Yeah, yeah, that makes the most sense, I think. Ooh. Um, yeah, because he's. Oh my god, what was that? <laughs> She heard you. <laughs> <laughs> that was his tribute to our podcast. <laughs> wow, thank you, Johnny. Excuse me? <laughs> Does he want to fight? I will cough in his face. <laughs> I think that's considered assault now. <laughs> yeah. <definitely>. Anyway, <laughs> for good reason. For a good reason. Yeah. Uh, yes. Jojen also says that the crow 
is north of the wall, and Bran thinks that he's always wanted to see the wall. Bran asks how to break the chains, and Jojen says he needs to open his third eye. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a load of nonsense, but <laughs> I guess it's real. Um, also, fun fact, I found a typo on page 4 or 7. Shit. <laughs> I want to see if it's in your book, too. I guess it's not a typo, it's missing punctuation. Let me see Ooh. if I can find it. That's something I will not notice. <laughs> uh, let's see. 437. Yes, let's see if I can find it. it. There was a missing period somewhere. Oh, okay. They are open. Can't you see? After they are open, there should be a period, but mine doesn't have one. I did not see it. You see it? it? Yeah, I see the capital C there. Like, <laughs> Yeah, there should be a period before that. <laughs> yeah. Fail on the editor. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Okay, Jojen says Bran refuses to open his third eye, which will allow him to see things that others cannot see. Yeah, now that I'm reading this part, it seems very obvious that that's what the <laughs> chains mean. <laughs> I was thinking too hard about it. We all do that. <laughs> Bran tries to change the subject, but Jojen won't allow it. He asks Bran about his wolf dreams, which starts to make Bran angry. Jojen said when he touched Summer, he felt Bran in him. Jojen says he felt Bran fall, and that scares Bran. The golden man, the queen's brother, and falling. Bran doesn't want to face it. He doesn't want to remember. Summer starts to growl at Jojen, and Mira steps between the wolf and her brother. She tells Bran to keep him back, but Bran says Jojen is making him angry. Jojen disagrees. He says it's Bran's anger and fear that are affecting his wolf. Part of Bran is Summer, and part of Summer is Bran. Interesting. Summer I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Summer rushes at Jojen, but Mira blocks him. Bran tries to call him off, but the wolf won't listen. He lunges again and again, and even Shaggy Dog joins in too, until the reeds are forced to climb the weirwood tree to get away from them. Bran calls for Hodor, who arrives and gleefully chases off the wolves. <laughs> I love Hodor so much. He's so pure. Yeah. yeah. Cute. <laughs> Bran doesn't understand why the wolves had gotten so wild. Hodor then takes Bran to the Maester's turret, where Bran tells Maester Lewin that Jojen apparently has the green sight. Apparently, the children of the forest had the green sight, and Bran wants to know if it's magic. Lewin says they could call it that, for want of a better word, but in truth, it's only a different sort of knowledge. No one knows exactly what, though, because the children are gone. They think it had to do with the faces carved into the weirwoods, and supposedly the green seers also had power over animals. Ooh... Bran being in summer. Mm. Bran says Jojen's dreams come true sometimes, or so he says, but Maester Lewin is skeptical. He asks Bran if he remembers what he was taught about Maester's chains, and this is where, in the story, we learn what they're all about. You've explained it before, but I think this is the first time in the book where they're actually going over what the chain is all about. <laughs> I don't remember explaining it before. You did. Um, I believe you that I did. I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, you explained that there's a new link, for, uh, like, made of a different type of metal for each study that's mastered. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the first time in the book where they actually explain that. Okay. At least, I think so. <laughs> Lewin shows... First time you remember. Yeah. Lewin shows Bran a link on his chain of Valyrian steel. Only one maester in a hundred wears this link and it signifies his study of the higher mysteries, or magic. But it's of small use, which is why so few maesters study it. Maester Lewin says he even tried his hand at some spells once upon a time, but nothing worked. Bran brings up the mages and warlocks in the east, but Maester Lewin says they just call themselves that. Perhaps magic was once a mighty force, but no more. When Bran sees Mira next, he apologizes for what happened with the wolves, but said that Jojen lied about his powers. Mira tells him about a dream Jojen had, about Bran and the reeds. They were at supper, and instead of a servant, Maester Lewin brought him his food. Interesting. He served him the king's cut off the roast, while the Freys got old grey meat. Yet they liked their supper better than Bran liked his. Dude, what? Confused. Yeah. Do you have any ideas about what? Like, I think I missed the part where it's Maester Lewin who serves him. So now I'm like, what? Now I'm revaluing. Yeah. You. Oh god, I forgot the word. Reevaluating. 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 Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Reeval. 
Oh god. I can't say <laughs> Re-evaluating. Re-evaluating. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting like an extra R in there. <laughs> I know, and then I can't pull it out. <laughs> it's fine. We all know what you're trying to say. I give up. <laughs> um, yeah, that, what, what I thought initially, like, what I speculated initially. Hmm. So now I'm like, okay, what does Meister Lewin have in all this? Okay, well, what were you speculating initially? Uh, I wrote down three ideas. Ooh, damn. That <laughs> Bran uh, has a destiny that... Okay. That phrase, like, don't really, I guess. Or, like, their destiny is, well, we know what it is. But I'm not going to say. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what their destiny okay. Oh, wait. I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, yes, I agree, like, with him getting the king's cut of the roast and them getting the old gray meat. That makes sense. But how does that translate to them liking their supper better than Bran likes his? It's one of mine, uh... Like, one of them is, like, the phrase, will remain ignorant, while he's going to be granted a sort of great knowledge with his green seer parent abilities mm. that he might unlock with his third eye. I see. But he is not going to like this. Okay, because he's going to, ignorance, uh, ignorance is bliss. Okay, mm. cool. So that's one idea? But now, yeah, but now I'm like, oh, wait. There were two ideas I mixed together. <laughs> oh, okay. I wrote down, like, three points of things I was thinking. Okay, what's the oh, third thing? The other one is about, like, length of life. Length like, of life. they get um, a really, like, old, gross meat while he has the bloodied meat. So you think that maybe means that they're going to die earlier than him? Maybe. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, what could it mean... That Maester Lewin is bringing him the food. Yeah, but now that's why I'm like, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> Taking a step back and trying to think some more. Maybe we'll find out. Oh, I'm sure we'll find out at some point. But <laughs> <laughs> whether it's going to be in this ideas? book or not. Um, well, Bran getting the king's cut off of the roast is basically what stood out to me the most. Um, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. I won't say anything. <laughs> but for those who know, they know what I'm talking about. So maybe something to do with that, which I would be pretty impressed if George R. R. Martin was already setting up that sort of stuff Yeah. from this early Me on too. in the story. Damn. Yeah. I'm really not sure about Maester Lewin bringing him the food. Yeah. Huh. Maybe something to do with, like, Maester Lewin has the knowledge that Bran needs? Mm -hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I have no idea. That's a tough one. It is. All right, well, if we are hit by any inspirational ideas, we can voice them later on. Okay. So, Bran does not understand what this dream means at all. <laughs> um, but Mira says he will. Mm-hmm. At supper that Ooh. night, it's pigeon pie set before him, not a roast. <laughs> and so Bran re decides right there and then that Maester Lewin is right. There is no magic. <laughs> Bran is relieved, but disappointed too. With magic, anything can happen. But without it, Bran will never walk, fly, or be a knight. And that is where that chapter ends. I feel yeah. like he took that dream too literal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or like, <laughs> yeah. Definitely too literal, and also, like, he just assumed it would happen, like, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Well, yeah. I guess he is nine. Mm-hmm. Bran, um, has a choice before him now. He can either accept his green sight that he supposedly has and open his third eye, or he can continue to keep that eye closed and stay as the little lord of Winterfell or little prince of Winterfell. <laughs> little prince. <laughs> little prince. And also there's the whole thing about remembering what happened to him with the oh, yeah. with Jamie because it seems like the memory is there. He's just refusing to look at it. Yeah. He doesn't want to acknowledge it. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's scary to think about it all. Too um, traumatic. 
Yep, traumatic, plus, like, if you choose to face that, what does that mean for, like, the realm? Like, you can't just face that and not do anything with it. You know, he'd have to, like, tell someone, and then what does that lead to? <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> More fighting. Exactly. <laughs> All right, moving on, I guess. The Tyrion? Yeah, chapter 29 is Tyrion. Well, past midnight, Lancel decides to visit Tyrion. Tyrion suspects Lancel was planning to find him drowsy and slow at this hour, but Tyrion's been pulling all-nighters recently, so he's wide awake. Tyrion, <laughs> Tyrion decides to take his time and takes a long shit and then puts on a bedrobe and messes up his hair before going down. <laughs> <laughs> to make it look like he just woke up, right? Yeah. Lancel has been sent by the Queen to order Tyrion to release Grand Maester Pycelle. Lancel sneers at Tyrion, refers to him as the Imp, and reminds Tyrion that the Queen is Joffrey's regent. He's such a douche. <laughs> yeah. Lancel informs Tyrion that Sir Jacelyn, Jacelyn, Jace I think, Jacelyn Bywater defied a command, which was probably to release Pycelle, mm -hmm. and that he needs to be arrested for treason. <laughs> He starts to warn Tyrion, who cuts him off, saying that he'll hear no warnings from a boy. Lancel grabs his hilt and tells his imp cousin to have a care to how he talks to him. What? Who the fuck <laughs> does this kid think he is? <laughs> right. He's talking to the hand of the king. <laughs> right? Gosh. God damn. He's like some teen kid who's taken his knighthood to his head and made it like... What's that word? What do they say? He's got a Blow big head. His head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a big ego. Yeah. Gross. Tyrion, unbothered, tells Lancel, one cry from him and Shaga will burst in and kill him with an axe instead of a wine skin. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Lancel flushes and reminds Tyrion that he is a knight. Tyrion asks if he was knighted before or after Cersei took him to bed. Varys had uh, told Tyrion about this. Ew. <laughs> Lancel is speechless. And Tyrion mocks him. Like, no warnings from me, sir. <laughs> Tyrion asks, what will Joffrey think if he learns Lancel killed his father to bed his mother? Oh, damn. <laughs> Lancel's horrified. He insists Lord Tywin ordered him to obey Cersei and everything. And that all he's doing... Tyrion jumps to his feet and tells Lancel to wait, as the king will want to hear this. <laughs> Lancel drops to his knees and begs for mercy. He swears to leave the city and pretend it never happened. Wow. Tyrion says, no, he wants Lancel to stay and continue doing what he's doing, and then report everything Cersei does back to him. Lancel swears without any hesitation. Tyrion agrees to give back Pycelle, and tells Lancel to tell Cersei that he begs for her forgiveness and that Lancel frightened him so much. <laughs> Before he leaves, Tyrion tells Lancel not to knock up Cersei and Lancel admits that he pulls up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he says, I like, I it. spread my seed on her belly or something. <laughs> it's like, whoa. So they do know about pulling out. I guess so. Like, <laughs> they must. They know what seed is in that. <laughs> Tyrion is too restless to go to sleep so he heads out to Chitaeus with Bronn he goes into the secret tunnel in the cupboard and Alaya uh, I think it might be Alaya yeah I noticed that she had that Yaya -ya nickname um, yeah. yeah he goes into the secret tunnel in the cupboard in Alaya's room and rides by horseback to Shay's manse he finds her naked and asleep he eats her up he puts his pee pee in her and comes instantly. As they cuddle, Tyrion realizes he's in love with her. <laughs> he eats her out, he puts his pee pee in her, and he comes instantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, that's dead. Cool. Dumb fuck. <laughs> what, Tyrion? Yeah, falling in love with another whore. Why do you think he's so in love with her? I don't get it. Gosh, maybe he doesn't really have a good sense of 
worth. Like, he doesn't think that an average lady will ever love her, and he thinks, like, paying her, like, gives the illusion, and he forgets the illusion. Yeah. And falls into the fantasy. That's sad. Yeah. I mean, we don't know if he's wrong yet at this point oh. in the book. Probably. Like, you don't know. Not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Still, so, like, she's a prostitute. He's still paying her. This is true. Mm-hmm. Cersei sleeping with Lancel kind of surprised me. I thought she, like, only ever wanted Jamie. You didn't remember that from the show? Uh... <laughs> I don't remember anything um, from the show. <laughs> oh my. That's been established. <laughs> yeah. No, it just it grossed me out more. Like, Cersei's. I don't know what she has for Lannister. <laughs> Ew. What? Because <laughs> Lancel is her cousin? Yeah. 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 Oh, I think it's because Maybe... he looks a little bit like Jamie. Like, discount Possibly. Jamie. Possibly. I think that Tyrion actually <laughs> says that the, at one yeah, point. Yeah, same blonde hair, I believe. Or did he say that his hair is not quite so yellow as Jamie's? Yeah, it's like it doesn't have the same golden glow that Jamie's has. It's more like straw. So he like he looks a little bit like Jamie, but it's definitely like a dollar store Jamie. <laughs> Discount Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for him. Like, I think he mentioned in the book that um, she must be getting lonely with Jamie uh, prisoner yeah that's a faux show oh one other thing that confused me Tyrion refers to his clansmen as wildlings yeah they were he, he, what'd you call them again clansmen oh yeah that's the word but I'm yeah they're from that word they're from the hills around river run right um the hills around the vale Yes. Sorry, I'm mixing that up with Riveron. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, well, that's confusing. If that term is not reserved for those beyond the wall, <laughs> like, why would you call multiple groups of people the same thing? It just makes it confusing. It is confusing. What if it's just, like, a general term for men who don't recognize the law? Could be. Of realm. Yeah. Could be that. All I right. don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Just keep calling them cl the clansmen. Why call them wildlings? Why? Maybe try to make them seem scarier. Hmm. All right. Chapter thirty is Arya. Arya sleeps beneath the Wailing Tower in Heron Hall on a bed of straw, and no longer has to hunt for worms and bugs to eat. As Weasel, she has bread, stew, carrots, turnip, and sometimes even a bite of meat. Hot Pie is working in the kitchens where he belongs, so he eats even better. They sometimes steal a moment to talk when Arya fetches food for Weez. Hot Pie keeps forgetting she's Weasel, though, and no longer <laughs> Ari. Gendry is in the forge, and Arya seldom sees him. She doesn't want to get to know those she serves with, either, because that only makes it hurt worse when they die. But, like, how are they dying? Why are they dying? Huh. Yeah, so I was like... No, I'm confused. I thought it was pretty, like, secure place. That's what I thought. Maybe some of them are, like, sick or something. Maybe, yeah. Or have wounds. Yeah. Because... Uh, why would they kill servants? I guess if they act out, they might, but... If they're just doing their job, there's not really any reason to take them out. <laughs> I don't know. When Lady Went held the castle, she used or she used only the lower thirds of two of the five towers, leaving the rest to fall into ruin. Now that Lord Tywin is here, the talk is that he plans to return Heron Hall to its former glory and make it his new seat when the war is done. Most of Arya's work is cleaning. The towers need to be made fit for habitation, which means scrubbing the floors, clearing grime off the windows, getting rid of broken furniture, taking care of pests, etc., etc., People still talk about the ghosts in the towers, but Arya thinks that's stupid. She doesn't <laughs> fear the dead. She fears the living. Wheeze, Sir Gregor Clegane, and Lord Tywin Lannister. Arya hasn't been near Lord Tywin at all. Wheeze is always watching, and he hits at the slightest provocation. Uh, well, that was a weird transition that I did there. <laughs> 
Arya hasn't been near Lord Tywin then. I'm like, Weeze is always watching. Yep, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I did think maybe in the last one, when she got assigned to Weeze, that she would be getting near Lord Tywin, but turns out that's not the case. But yeah, her little boss, Weeze, always watching, and he hits at the slightest provocation, so it takes only three days for him to earn the place of honor in Arya's nightly prayers. Harrenhal is enormous, by the way. It covers thrice as much ground as Winterfell, and its kitchens are as large as Winterfell's Great Hall. Damn, this place is it's huge! It's to imagine that. Yeah. It's insane. I don't even remember Harrenhal from the show. <laughs> I don't remember anything from the show. Fuck. I remember it. I don't think it was really show. Hmm. Let me look it up. I want to see what it looked like. Harrenhal. Uh, I see a lot of fan art. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like just a little bit when do you remember when Arya was in this position in the show? Uh no. I remember nothing. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, I think I find some stage sets. I'm seeing all the ruins, but not the castle standing That's on its own. <laughs> It probably is the castle, <laughs> just ruins. Yeah, I guess I guess so, actually, because the story is that it was, like, attacked by oh, yes. dragons, right? Mm -hmm. So it actually does make sense that it's, like, totally ruins. fucked, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Where was I? Arya hears all sorts of secrets as she goes about her duties, because people don't notice her. One secret she hears is that Joffrey is a bastard and not the rightful king at all, and that Tywin says never to speak such filth. She hears about Stannis and Renly joining the fighting. There's always talk of Beric Dondarrion and the many people who claim to have killed him, yet he still seems to be living. Who is this Beric Dondarrion fellow that everyone keeps talking about? He's the dude. I know who he is, but... <laughs> I was going to remind that he was the guy Yeah. who... Ned Stark sent out to kill Sir Gregor again. Or bring him back for justice. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. A strange company of men known as the Bloody Mummers arrives one day. They are brown skinned, powdered, feathered, have beards dyed various colors, and bells in their hair. They also seem to have a septon and a maester. Wee says they're footmen, sell swords and warns her to stay away from them if she doesn't want to get flayed. And they're riding goddamn zebras. Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, what she hears about them kind of freaks her out, and she wonders how many monsters Lord Tywin has on his side. The Bloody Mummers don't linger long, though. When they're riding out again, Arya hears them mention the young wolf in Riverrun. She didn't know her brother was so close. Riverrun is much closer than Winterfell, though she isn't certain where it is in relation to Harrenhal. So Arya is filled with hope. She wants to see all of her siblings, uh, even Sansa. Wow! <laughs> you know shit's real if she wants to see Sansa. <laughs> yeah. Arya knows there are cap captives around uh, from some battle on the Green Fork, and wonders if one of them might help her escape. Arya knows one of them, Lord Sirwyn, who used to visit Winterfell often with his son Clay. But Arya never sees him. He's a bed in a tower cell somewhere, recovering from a wound. So we met Clay in one of Bran's perspective chapters in the last episode or the episode before. Arya tries to work out how to sneak in to see Lord Sirwin, but before she can, she hears that he has died. Well, well, <laughs> and there goes that plan. One afternoon, Sir Amory Lorch who I believe is the guy who killed Yorin? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he arrives, and guess who's with him in his column? The prisoners she had freed. Rorge, Biter, and Yakin Jakin Hagar. But... Yakin <laughs> But they are no longer prisoners. They seem to be riding with Lorge. Arya thinks she should have let the fire have them. As they ride past, Yakin Jack and Hagar glances in Arya's direction, but doesn't seem to recognize her. That night, Arya is awakened by a hand over her mouth. It's Jack and Hagar! I'll just call him by his proper name for fuck's sake. He greets her by saying, A boy becomes a girl. 
He then tells Arya he's in her debt and owes her three lives since she saved the three prisoners. Ooh, a lucky lady. <laughs> Arya asks him to take her to River Run, but he says he will give her three lives, no more, no less. And then he's gone in a puff of smoke. <laughs> Not actually, but that's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, she, she turns away to, like, light a candle or something, and then he's gone. That night, and all during the next day while she works, Arya thinks of all the people she wants dead. But she doesn't know who to choose, and she doesn't know whether she can trust Jack and Hagar. She thinks about her father's lesson to Rob and John, that if you condemn a man to death, you should kill him yourself. Arya avoids Jack and Hagar for a few days, and then Sir Gregor returns. I didn't know he was gone, but he's back. <laughs> Weez sends Arya to ask if they have clothes that need mending, but when she arrives, Chiswick, who is a guy who's also on her little kill list, the guy who thinks he's funny, Chiswick is telling a story. He talks about an alehouse they were at, where they took turns raping the brewer's 13-year-old daughter in front of him, and he goes into a great amount of detail. Bruh. Say. The men all laugh, and Arya leaves without a word. She gets a beating from Weez when he finds out she never asked about the clothes. Two nights later, as she's pouring ale in the barracks hall, she sees Jack and Hagar. She works her way towards him and whispers Chiswick's name in his ear. He gives no sign that he heard, and she moves on. Nothing happens the next day or the day after, but on the third day, she hears that one of the mountain's men fell off the wall walk and broke his neck. Oh dear, how terribly tragic. Some are saying it's Heron's ghost that flung him off the wall. Arya wants to say it wasn't Heron, it was her. She killed Chiswick with a whisper. And she will kill two more before she's through. She's the ghost in Heron Hall. Kind of badass, but also kind of taking credit from Jack and, Jack and, <laughs> <laughs> Jack and bad motherfucker Hagar. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's the real ghost, I think it's Jack and. <laughs> yeah, I think that's cute. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it. That's that chapter. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Cool. So Maybe she'll choose... <laughs> Tywin or Cersei. Big. <gasps> Sir Gregor. She'd be someone. Oh, yeah. She could choose anyone. <laughs> Dude. I wonder she what would... two left. I wonder what would happen if she chose Jack and Hagar. <laughs> Kill yourself, bitch. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> she needs him to kill people in her list of names. I'm just thinking hypothetically <laughs> <laughs> what he would do. Oh, yeah himself <laughs> just throws himself <laughs> off the wall walk breaks his own neck the name is spoken <laughs> uh, anyway yeah cool chapter i wonder who she's gonna choose i guess that's it for this episode Ooh, that's that mm -hmm. if you want more of the podcast please follow us on instagram you can follow the podcast at tigbab podcast or you can follow us separately. My handle is Crimby. Jess's is Jess.Egan24. You can also find us on Facebook. Uh, just search Tigbab Podcast or Tea is Good, Books Are Better, and we should pop up there. Also, please subscribe to our good friend Baram Barami on YouTube. He's the one who made our jingle that you heard at the start of this episode. And he's really dope and makes cool stuff, so give him a like and a subscribe. Also, you can check out our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tea is good, books are better. We have a few different tiers on there with fun rewards, so if you contribute, you will get something in return. You will also be helping us out immensely, and we'd be very appreciative, but we also just appreciate you listening. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends, please, to help us continue growing. And here's another shout out to Tobias, who continues to support the podcast on Patreon throughout this global pandemic. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Any last words, Jessica? Are you speaking? Because I can't hear you. She said. What? I said what she said. <laughs> Good God, what is with us cutting out? <laughs> I'm like sitting here waiting for you to like respond to stuff I'm saying. And I'm like, well, she died. <laughs> okay. Oh my. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Say bye, Jess. Bye. <laughs>